Hi guys, today I wanted to show you how you can take your video editing to a whole new level using a network attached storage, uh, also known as, as a NAS. The one I'll be using is the Synology DS1618 Plus. Uh, this is a 6 bay NAS, meaning it can hold 6 hard drives. Now a NAS is basically like a self-contained computer that you connect directly to your network router uh, so you can access it 24 hours a day from any uh, of your network devices, uh, but even while you are away uh, using the internet connection. Uh, I did a review of a couple of network drives before that I used as backup only, and since they were not fast or powerful enough to be used for everyday video editing. Uh, this new network drive is great for backing up your files because it's easy to set up automatic backups using Synology's Disk Station Manager, which is uh, their web interface. Uh, as you can see, it looks like a Windows or Apple desktop where you can install apps, uh, check your settings, even browse, copy, upload or modify all of your files uh, you have on the NAS from anywhere in the world using internet interface. Uh, what I did not expect was that this NAS is fast enough to also be used as my uh, Plex driver. Uh, they even have an app uh, that, which makes setting up Plex uh, super easy. Now more importantly, I can use this NAS as my main working drive in my home studio setup so that two or more people can access the same project and work on it at the same time. In DaVinci Resolve, this is very easy to do because you can set up a project database on the Synology NAS which allows multi-user collaboration. Uh, if you've never done this inside of Resolve, uh, but you, let's say, you ha like to have multiple people work on a project at the same time, then this is really a game changer. Basically, in Resolve, by default, you create a project in your local database that is saved on your computer. What some people don't know is that you can also create a shared database and place it on a network-attached computer, or even better, on a NAS like the one that I'm using. Uh, this way, anyone on your network can open the same project and work on them uh, at the same time. Everything in the project is saved in real time as different users work on the project. In the bottom right corner of the screen, you create your username, and as you start editing a timeline, that timeline gets automatically locked so that another editor can view your work but can't change it while you're in the middle of editing. You can, however, have another user do color grading while you edit, and vice versa. I sometimes just duplicate a timeline and uh, I'll work on a section while another editor works on the duplicate timeline on uh, another section. Then once we are done we can compare the two timelines in Resolve where it will automatically show you the differences between the two. Uh, you can preview the changes and if you like it you can accept it so Resolve can again automatically adjust your edit. The best way to set up a database that will work with DaVinci Resolve is to do it on a NAS drive. Uh, if you've never done this, then there is already a great tutorial by Sandra Gronas uh, that shows you step by step how to do this. Uh, to watch this video tutorial and uh, to read the in-depth tutorial by Sandra, just follow my link in the description. If you want to learn about all the cool features of multi-user collaboration in DaVinci Resolve, uh, then I will also provide a link to a video that explains it all. And now a word from our sponsor. Uh, video Converter Ultimate is an uh, easy and fast way to convert uh, your video files from one format to another. You can also use it to download, compress, edit and burn videos in a thousand different formats. Uh, plus you can do a whole bunch of other things. Uh, here I'm going to show you how easy it is to convert an MOV file uh, to MP4. Uh, so here I'm going to just click to add a, a video file that I want to convert. And as you can see right away it just shows you, uh, you know, information about the video file. There's a whole bunch of easy presets that are commonly used. Uh, I'm just going to leave it here at default, just want to change it to an MP4, the same resolution, and that's it, just click Convert All, and watch it do its magic. And once it's finished going through all the files, you're going to have a little here success uh, check mark, and here's the final shot here, not the most exciting, but yeah, it just shows you, for example, uh, the conversion that it did, and it did a really good job, like I said, original resolution, there's not much of a difference in quality, uh, but a big, you know, drastic uh, change in the in the file size. Uh, so anyways, if you guys are interested, uh, give this a try. Uh, once again, it's Wondershare Video Converter Ultimate. Uh, if you want to get it the full license, it's $39.95. Or if you want, you can buy the lifetime license. I think it just makes more sense. Uh, 20 bucks extra for $59. Anyways, let's continue with our video. So let's take a look at the speed of the Synology NAS drive. Uh, it's advertised as gigabit Ethernet speed per port. Now, there's actually four Ethernet ports on the bag. The extra Ethernet ports can be used to get faster speeds for reading and writing uh, using link uh, aggregation. For my setup, I'm just using the one port, which gives me 1000 megabits per second or 125 megabytes per second uh, speeds. Now, as you can see, this is pretty much what I've been averaging. 
Uh, this means that not only can I use this drive for backup, but also as my main working drive. Uh, here you can see me playback from the NAS drive, a 4K video file that is in raw cinema DNG format. Uh, it plays back at 24 frames per second without losing frames. Uh, now here's a, another file that is also raw video file from the Red Dragon camera in UHD 4K. And again, as you can see, it also plays back great. Now, when I edit with an assistant on another computer, uh, we can both access the same files on the Synology NAS and play them back in real time, unless these are uh, both 4K RAW files. In that case, the network itself will simply not handle that kind of data rate. Uh, in my tests, I noticed that when editing just your typical kind of compressed 4K videos from mirrorless cameras, then two or even three uh, people can work over the network no problem. Now, for anything more demanding, I would suggest you actually upgrade your whole network to the faster speed uh, using a 10 gigabit network. Now, this Synology NAS can also be upgraded because it has a PCI Express expansion port that will allow you to add a 10 gigabit Ethernet card, or also you can put in there a dual M2 SATA SSD card for faster system caching. In terms of storage, this NAS can accept six drives inside. Uh, up to 12 terabytes per drive, this will allow you to have 72 terabytes of space. Now, you, you could of course set up those multiple drives in various RAID configurations, and this would allow you to have better backup redundancy by mirroring data across two, uh, or in RAID 6, for example, you can mirror to three drives. Uh, this would obviously lower your overall storage amount, but in return, uh, even if, let's say, two drives failed, you can still replace those drives uh, without losing any data. If you need even more hard drive space, then you can expand this NAS up to 192 terabytes. You can do that by connecting a 5-drive expansion unit on each of the two eSATA ports on the back. And now th this will give you 10 extra drives. Together with the 6 drives in front of the unit, uh, that means you can connect up to 16 drives altogether. In the back, you will also find two USB ports, plus on the right is the access to the PCI Express expansion slot. Uh, there is another USB port on the front as well. Uh, using the USB ports, you can copy data directly from USB devices to your NAS without having to go through your network. Uh, just install the USB copy application in the Disk Station Manager and then connect your drive. You can also get a second Synology NAS and store it, let's say, at a different location, like a friend's house or, or another studio, and use Synology's Cloud Station Sync uh, to create your own personal cloud. Uh, Synology also has its own cloud service called C2. Now the Disk Station Manager lets uh, you set RAID, uh, manage storage, check health of disks. Uh, here you can install additional applications uh, through the Package Center to tailor the NAS to your needs. Uh, for example, the Quick Connect uh, allows you to connect your, to your NAS using the internet. Uh, Moments is another uh, application which is a photo and video organization program. Image recognition identifies people, uh, subjects and places, making searching your photos easier. And now surveillance station makes it easy to set up a home security system where all of your IP cameras can automatically stream and record to your NAS. There is even more things that you can do using the Synology NAS that I won't even attempt to get into in this video. Uh, like I said before, a NAS is sort of like a computer that is designed to efficiently upload and download data across a network. Uh, and it has to be able to always stay on and do all of, the, of its tasks without using uh, too much power or making too much noise. Now the fans on the back of this NAS are powerful yet quiet. Uh, this system has a 2.1 GHz Intel Atom quad-core processor and 4 GB of DDR4 RAM, which can actually be expanded up to 32 GB. So if you're editing videos, especially if you're using DaVinci Resolve and want a centralized place where you keep all of your data, and so that multiple people can edit the same project at the same time, then uh, look into getting a network attached storage device like the Synology Disk Station DS1618+. By the way, I'm also now hosting a different filmmaking workshops and doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with KidSplit. So if you want to learn cinematography, directing or advanced color grading, then sign up for a workshop at kidsplit.com slash workshops. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. And as always, you can find more info on my website where you can also sign up to my newsletter. Uh, so this way you can stay up to date on the latest filmmaking news, gear reviews and tutorials. Uh, thanks and I'll see you guys in the next video.